here's Frank, Scott, Chris, and Adam. The defending World Series champs are looking to repeat as they just made a massive blockbuster. Welcome into another emergency edition of Fantasy Baseball today on Thursday, July 29th. Frank Stample joined by Scott White. Wow. Just, wow. What can you Man. possibly say? The Dodgers, We're, a team that already has an all-star roster, Scott. Uh, Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. And in doing so, they swipe Max Scherzer away from their division rival, San Diego Padres, <laughs> who originally were reported to be close to acquiring him early on Thursday. Collusion! Collusion! <laughs> the Dodgers and the Nationals are conspiring to break the league. It's unbelievable. Wow. Uh, let's, unbelievable. Start with, let's start with Max Scherzer. He's been really good this year. He's the SP15 in fantasy points per game. He made a start on Thursday, six innings, one run, five strikeouts. The ERA down to 2.76. He's got a 0 0.89 whip, a whole bunch of strikeouts, and actually a career-high 16.4% swinging strike rate. Mm. I don't know that this changes much, Scott, but what do you think? Sure is it to the Dodgers. I mean, going to a better team is going to help his win potential, and he's somebody who goes deep enough to get wins with consistency. Uh, you know, maybe he's I haven't I haven't even I rarely look at pitchers win loss records, you know, because they're not predictive in any way. But Same. okay, so seven and four and eighteen starts. He, you know, pretty nice win pace already. But it, it only gets more likely that Scherzer's gonna be piling up wins. Um yeah, I think I think Max Scherzer is one of the least affected people in this deal. There are other players on the Dodgers that are affected. Trey Turner might be affected. But I, I think Scherzer, I think Scherzer just holds steady. So once Clayton Kershaw returns, which they're talking about that happening this weekend, who do you think gets the boot from the rotation? Tony Gonsolin or David Price? It's a good question. I mean, Price, they were just beginning to stretch him out. So my guess would be him just because he hasn't been in the rotation as long. He would get the boot over Gonsolin. Gonsolin was the guy they preferred to be in. Uh, first, but it, at the same time, it's taken Gonsolin so long to stretch out. I mean, he's gone. He's I think he's gone 80 pitches and three thrown 80 pitches and three straight starts. So I, I guess he's getting there and he's looked pretty good. My my guess is David Price, but they have options now. They have options in, in the rotation once everybody's healthy. And then it seems like Kershaw will be soon. Um, and they certainly have options in their starting lineup after acquiring Trey Turner and yeah, I, I'm trying to think, like, who is the Dodgers' third starter? Who's their number three starter? I, it's three co-aces, right? Because Walker yeah. Bueller, he's actually been the best pitcher in fantasy. I know in points leagues. I assume in, I assume in Roto, too, because he's gotten so many more innings than DeGrom, Jacob DeGrom. So I, I'm assuming Bueller would be number three just because he's not necessarily Hall of Fame bound like those other two. But, like, it's worth reminding people who... Because, you know, there's there's kind of this feeling surrounding Kershaw and Scherzer both. They're getting older. You know, they haven't been maybe as dominant in recent years. Certainly Scherzer, you could make that case for him last year. But they are numbers one and two right now. Scherzer followed by Kershaw in swinging strike rate, the ultimate measure of dominance in my mind. They're numbers one and two, at least among qualifiers. I mean, DeGrom's is way higher, but he doesn't qualify anymore. So, uh Scherzer and Kershaw definitely still got it. Yeah, yes. and that's definitely going to play in the postseason, too. Good luck to any teams that have to face a threesome of... Sorry for the verbiage there. But <laughs> of, of Walker Bueller. We've been doing a lot of these. Walker Bueller, uh, Max Scherzer, and, and Clayton Kershaw. It's, and then they got Julio Arias there still, too. So Yeah, even if they want to go with, with, uh, with four guys in in the postseason they can do that they have that luxury trey turner was the other huge piece in this deal and he's actually arbitration eligible in 2022 so the dodgers have him not only for the rest of this season but for next season max scherzer is actually a free agent after this season he's on the COVID il right now on the season trey turner's batting 322 18 homers 21 steals he is the fifth ranked player in roto and it sounds like he is going to play second base for the Los Angeles Dodgers. So Corey Seager, 
expected to return on Friday. He will remain at shortstop. Trey Turner will slide over to second base. He will have dual eligibility, Scott. Oh, yeah. And I mean, shortstop, the depth runs out at some point, too. So I, you may still want to play him at shortstop. But second base uh, is, is certainly weaker at the top. And it's possible, you know, if you're already rostering two great shortstops, this may this will make your life a little easier. Um, now, now, you saw that. How official is it that Turner's playing second base? I saw a lot of speculation along those lines. But I, I saw John Heyman tweet about it, so yeah, I, probably he, he nothing sa- official yet. But he sounded his verbiage sounded pretty definite. But you know, he he fires off a lot of tweets in a short period of time, and yeah, sometimes sometimes the wires get crossed. So um, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that seems most likely. Turner's played second base in the majors before. He's also played center field in the majors before. Wouldn't it be crazy if he got triple eligibility? As much as the Dodgers like to mix it up, true. Um, so, uh, I mean, you know, from a fantasy pr- perspective, he's the, the even bigger get than Scherzer because Turner, you mentioned top five in Roto this year, and like if we were redrafting for next year, he'd be like at worst the sixth player taken, maybe the seventh player taken, uh, something like that. And, and obviously, he's been a first rounder for a long time. I do wonder maybe if he runs a little less in the Dodgers lineup just because they're so loaded. But like I said, for Starling Marte going to the A's, I feel like generally when teams acquire acquire a guy who is mostly known for stealing bases, they continue to steal bases. And I would say I would say Turner fits that description. So I expect him to keep running. It'll be interesting to see where he bats. You know, with with I mean Corey Seager. Corey Seager, we haven't seen play a major league game since may 15th it's been a long time now but it sounds like he's returning right when turner's joining the lineup uh seager was pretty much a fixture at the top there right uh bets and seager one and two so i don't know what that means for turner maybe, maybe seager moves down uh maybe maybe not though maybe maybe turner bats fifth or sixth i, I think that's possible uh so that would obviously hurt his value a little bit it wouldn't hurt it a lot, but it would hurt it a little bit. So I think picking up second base eligibility is, is obviously big for Turner's value, but there is going to be a little bit of a trade off there. Nothing that's going to dramatically swing his value one way or another, but just it's something to keep in mind. It's something to keep in mind. The Turner part of this trade, like that's what makes it a real shocker because. You know, you'd think for like a franchise type player like that, uh, who still has a year of control left after this year, the Nationals would have to be blown away by the return, especially if you're including Scherzer with them. And I just, I mean, we'll get into the Nationals return in a minute, but I, I just, I, I'm, if I'm a GM, I'm not sure this is a blow me away type of return for those two guys, especially when you consider uh, apparently they had a pretty good offer from the Padres just for Scherzer. I wonder, I wonder now what it was in retrospect. Yeah, no, it's a great point that you bring up and I agree with you wholeheartedly. We'll get into some of those players, the prospects in particular who could have fantasy value as soon as this season. Soon, next month. Now. Yeah. <laughs> next week it, it could even be, yeah. uh, I just want to finish out everything here on the Dodgers lineup because okay. someone is going to lose playing time. It, I would imagine because yep. you have Dr- Justin Turner at third base. You have Max Muncy at first base, Trey Turner at second. If that's what they go with Corey Seager at shortstop, the outfield Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger, some combination of Chris Taylor and AJ Pollock. But that some combination part of it means that maybe those guys are splitting time. Maybe they cut Cody Bellinger's playing time as, as bad as he's been. What do you think happens there? Yeah. So, yeah, I th- I think I think Cody Bellinger, I'd be concerned about his playing time if if you didn't already have reason to be concerned about his usefulness to your fantasy team going forward. I mean, he's just the the Dodgers are at a point now where I mean, they're they're highly invested in this year, right? They need to they need to make some hay here. They need to make sure they win games and rehabilitating Bellinger may come into conflict with that, especially since, you know, you get Seager back, coming back, presumably Trey Turner playing second base. 
That means Max Muncy obviously can't take him out. He's taken over full time at first base. Uh, Betts is going to be back, I think, as early as this weekend. Yep. So he's locked up. He's locked up right field. Uh, so that just leaves center field for Bellinger, which of course he could play and play well. But then there's still Chris Taylor, who's having a career year, been a very valuable piece, and there's still AJ Pollock. So, I mean, at, at this point, Pollock, Taylor, Bellinger, you know, Bellinger's the least useful right now. The Dodgers are still in second place. They're in second place by three games. They got to lock up the division. So I, I'd be very worried about Bellinger's playing time, certainly against left-handed pitchers. And I'd be worried about Pollock's playing time. Be a little worried about Chris Taylor's playing time, though I imagine he'll get the most of those three. Uh, he, he'll probably just bounce around and give days off to guys here and there, um, which, you know, isn't... Uh, isn't the best thing for those other guys that he's going, you know, just the, the crowding in the Dodgers lineup is going to rob a little bit from everybody, I would assume, but it'll rob the most from Bellinger and Pollock. I think that's a text from AJ Preller, Scott. He's trying to make a trade in your dynasty league. Ah, yes, <laughs> it, it is a, tra- it is a text from somebody in my dynasty league, but it's... Ooh, is it me? One of my late texts? No, it's Michael Herkim. Herkim. Yeah, all right. <laughs> For those who've listened to the podcast for a long time, you may remember him. Uh, let's talk about the return in this trade. So Trey Turner and Max Scherzer going to the Dodgers, and in return, Washington receives catcher, prospect, I mean, great prospect, and Kybert Ruiz, pitcher prospect, and Josiah Gray. They also received uh, two lower-level prospects in Gerardo Carrillo. He's a pitcher and outfielder Donovan Casey. So let's start with Kybert Ruiz, Scott. He was absolutely crushing AAA. Was batting 311, 16 homers, a 10 12 OPS. He's 23 years old. It wouldn't surprise me if we see him debut for the Nationals in the coming weeks. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he took over as their starting catcher right away. He was blocked by Will Smith for the, the Dodgers, obviously, and wasn't, you know, Smith's so entrenched now and has so many years of control left that it was obvious Kiebert Ruiz was just going to be trade bait now. Um, but he's had a breakout season at Triple A. Did you give the numbers already, Frank? Yep. Yeah, 16 home runs in 52 games. His career high previously was 12, and he's already at 16 in just 52 games. So there was a question of whether he'd ever develop power to be a fantasy asset. Now, he's such a good defender you know that he remained high in the prospect rankings anyway, and he has like exceptional contact skills, really good at putting the bat on the ball. So, you know, there there was a chance he was going to be a pretty good hitter, even if he wasn't much of a power source. But now that it appears that he's developed power, making some adjustments at the alternate training site um, that led to harder contact there, and it's clearly translating to numbers now. I mean, he might be somebody who we're talking about is the best catcher in baseball in a couple years. Like it, it is a, it is a good get. Like if you're going to get a prospect from a team, this is a good one to get, you know, catcher prospects specifically have a high failure rate, but I'm encouraged by the fact Ruiz makes so much contact. Let's assume I have a little fun here. Kyber Ruiz traded to the nationals. He is in their lineup this weekend. He's called up right away. Would you rather have Kybert Ruiz or Dalton Varsho? I'd rather have Varsho. But Varsho's been hot and steals bases and is playing every day, playing more often than the average catcher because he plays outfield too. So, Would you rather have Ruiz or Eric Haas? Haas? I mean, particularly with what we've seen from prospect call-ups the past two years. Yeah. like you you got to prove something first. But So what, what range would... Ruiz fall into? Would you rather have him well, over someone like Yadier Molina, Sean Murphy, those guys? I think that's comparable. I think that's com- I, I think I'd take the chance on the upside in most leagues if if it came to that. Yeah. Okay. And again, this is assuming that Kyber Ruiz is starting, which we don't know yet, but we could see him very soon. So if that were to happen, that would put Kyber Ruiz right around catcher 12 or 13 in Scott's ranking. So keep that in mind. The other big prospect that the Nationals received, Josiah Gray, who we have seen recently with the Dodgers, 198 minor league innings for him, 
2.41 ERA, 0.93 whip. Fantastic numbers. He's only pitched eight innings in the majors this season. He's got a 20.8% swinging strike rate. <laughs> so it's a very small sample. Yeah. What we've seen to this point, he looks the part. He does, and and the overall results weren't great. It's worth noting, but it, that is an eye popping missed bats rate. I, I mean, Degrom is in another world. Jacob Degrom is in far as far as swinging strikes go, and his rate is twenty one point six percent. So Josiah Gray, in that little bit we've seen him in the majors, is has has managed to to meet that, and uh, you know, good strikeout numbers in the minors too. Uh. But the fact the fact he's come up at the majors and while you know may still be a little rough around the edges, he's able to he's been able to deceive and overpower hitters immediately like that. I mean, I think a lot more of Josiah Gray's potential now than I did two weeks ago. Uh, it, to me, the, it's very encouraging stuff. And of course, the Nationals have an opening in the rotation right away. Part of the reason I kind of been writing off Josiah Gray as a fantasy pickup is because we knew he was going to get sent back down as soon as Kershaw was back. Well, now he's probably here to stay. Probably, I would say. I mean, I guess it's possible they send him to AAA, maybe want to save some service time for when they are trying to contend again. But my suspicion is he'll probably be up right away. So Josiah Gray, I think, becomes an immediate pickup. Mm. Would you rather have Josiah Gray or someone like Joe Ross? I think Ross, but you know I don't really trust Joe Ross. It's yeah. just it's it's just it's just hard to move on from him with as consistent as he's been. Mm-hmm. How about Tyler McGill or Josiah Gray? Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't quite know what to make of McGill because he keeps getting it done too, but the underlying numbers are a little less than I'd like them to be. I think I'd lean Gray there. Actually, it's close though. Yeah, I think I would go with McGill. It is close. I would I would drop David Price for Josiah Gray, take the upside shot there. I would drop Paddock at this point. I would drop Patrick Corbin for Josiah yep. Gray. Yep. Take an, take an upside shot. So someone towards the end of your bench, um, you can take that chance on Josiah Gray. The last thing I wanted to ask you, does this affect Juan Soto's overall value? I mean, he doesn't you know, have Trey Turner to drive in anymore. Yeah, I mean, usually when there's a star level player like that, and I was saying this about Jose Ramirez all off season, and other than the fact that he stopped stealing bases, um, I think it's proven true that when the it's a high end enough hitter, it really doesn't matter who the supporting cast is. He's gonna he's gonna get his numbers. I remember people used to freak out about Freddie Freeman back when the Braves were rebuilding, and he was always he was always a stud. So yeah, I'm not that worried about Juan Soto. Yeah, that's a very good point uh, about Freddie Freeman. All right, maybe we should just make this the full length podcast. Just keep going now, right? Give everyone your sleepers, your two star pitchers. We're I mean, I haven't looked at a single thing that's happened in baseball and the actual games going on. But they do. There's so much, like with just the trade. All right, well, let's <laughs> sign off here so we could actually get into some of that stuff. For Scott, I am yeah. Frank. Thank you all for listening and watching fantasy baseball today. We will be back in, I don't know, an hour or two. Bye bye. <laughs>